Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you some overlooked and underrated FL Studio features. Hopefully one or two of them give you some creative ideas and you can fit them into your current projects. So let's get right into it. This first one is a brilliant way to add some movement to your effects and it works on any audio clip. And you can automate any of the effects, but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to be controlling the wet level of the reverb. Just a simple right click, create automation clip. This is obviously nothing special. The clip just controls the level of the wet control on the reverb. Where this becomes really interesting is going over to these controls in the top left, articulator tools, and today we're looking at analyze audio file. In your project folder, you can find the name of your audio clip, in this case drums. You'll see that in just a few seconds, it's created an envelope for our automation clip that matches the peak value of our audio clip. Now you can hear and see that the wet value of the reverb is jumping up each time one of those drum hits occurs. But where this becomes really special is going back into the tools, scale levels. This allows you to do all sorts of things, including inverting the waveform, and you can also offset it to make it more or less dramatic. So let's take a listen. And now you can hear this crazy effect where each time there's a kick, the reverb ducks away and then it swells back up in between. In effect, we've created a sidechain effect, but we haven't had to route to another channel, load any sort of compressor, do any sort of side chaining, and try to adjust settings. We've done it nice and clean with a simple automation clip. However, I would probably go a little bit further and clean this up. So there's a few more tools going a little bit off script here, but I would select smooth up. Let's take a listen with this automation and then just holding the reverb high. When I just held the reverb high, it was just swelling on top of everything, which might be what you want. When it ducked away, it was definitely a more creative effect and that might just fit in the mix a little bit better. Of course, this is just reverb on a drum. It's a little bit boring, but there's so many ways you can use this effect. It's very useful with vocals. Sometimes you want to swell a reverb or a delay in between phrases, and you can use this to very cleanly achieve that without having to route to another channel, sidechain a compressor to duck your reverb, and try to dial in all of those settings. Sometimes that's better, sometimes it's not. So you could always try both and see which one works for you. There's a tool built right into FL Studio to create unique textural pads from any audio sample. Now, instead of choosing an obvious one like a piano, a synth, or a vocal, because those all work really well, I'm gonna choose a slightly more odd one, this plucked guitar recording. So all you have to do is double click, right click, edit in audio editor, select this tool here. It's like a teardrop, it's called blur. Adjust the amount to about 4,000 milliseconds and hit accept. And now we have this unique textural airy pad that we can layer under our track. Select this icon here, drag it into place. So I've added some EQ to smooth it out. Just add a crossfade there. Add back in some of our elements. You can hear it just fills out the mix a little bit. Now this is one way to use it, but I often like dragging this into a granulizer. Add some pan. And now if you were to export something like that and blend it under the track, it can add an awful lot more movement than just the original pad. If you're the kind of person that spends a long time dialing in your effects and getting things perfect in the mix, don't start from scratch, don't reinvent the wheel next time you open up a project. Just right click, file, save mixer track state, and then the next time you want it, it'll be in this list here. I've got a relatively fresh install of FL Studio, but I made sure to transfer across some of my master preset files. So on the next project, I just right click, select that preset, and then all of the plugins and plugin settings are loaded immediately. If I just open these up, what's important is that all the little settings that I adjust every single time are already done for me. So my loudness is set up the way I want. In VSX, I'm on the right room, with the right EQ settings, so it's dialed in the way I like it. Of course, when it comes to limiters, EQs, and compressors, you're going to have to dial in all of this anyway and adjust it, but I've got everything turned on, and from there I can just fine tune it. If you've dialed in perfect settings in the past, the next time you use that bass or that sort of drum loop, just drag those effects back in and give yourself a good place to start from. 
It's quite shocking how well hidden this one is, but it is possible to use external inputs with third-party plugins in FL Studio. So if I want to create a sidechain between the kick and bass, after creating a regular sidechain like this, and then loading a plugin on the bass channel, you'll notice that the sidechain detection circuit is not picking up on those drums, no matter what I do here. You have to take one more step, you have to go into the processing and change one of these nodes here, and it should say in the top corner what it is you're doing, so this is the sidechain index input. Now you can see that the bass compressor is listening to those drums and applying compression to the bass accordingly. It can be frustrating when you've paid good money for a plugin and you don't feel like you're getting the most out of it or even using all of the features. So I do have a video which slows down this process, shows you how to do this external input on a few different plugins and also some different reasons why you might want to do that. And I've linked that just up there. This technique gives you so much control over your sounds and it's using the frequency splitter to split up the sounds into low, mid and high bands. I do this all the time on pre-recorded loops where I don't have access to the original samples. So in this case, I've got the drum loop again. I've side chained to a low, mid and high channel and in the frequency splitter, I have one, two and three in the sends. Again, I've got a full tutorial which slows down this process for anyone that's new to this. What this lets you do is simply split up the audio and apply processing to each part. So let's say I want to add some transient processing just to the top. With the mids, I want to do something really creative like add a delay, but I don't want that delay to include the kick drum. And then I can go to the low end and add some saturation just on that kick, but I don't want to saturate the snare and hi-hats. And of course you can change the different ranges of the frequency splitter and just split it up the way you want. It also lets us control the volume of different parts of the loop if we think some of it's a little bit too loud or too quiet. Now using drums is a really obvious example for this, but some more interesting ones are taking say the mid or the top end of a vocal and applying lots of saturation to that to really sort of brighten things up and add a bit of air, but without adding a load of weight to the low end of the vocal. So there's loads of different ways you could apply this. I'm sure you can think of some different examples in, you know, in your current project where you might be able to fit some of these techniques in. So thank you very much for watching. I hope at least one or two of them were useful. And if you want to know more about all of the techniques, I have full videos linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>